It isn't the prosperity that motivates me. I do know that if prosperity is my goal, the freer society is, the better it is for us. I understand that. But my biggest concern, of course, when I see what's happening is a threat to our personal liberty. And I have always argued, I would argue the case for liberty because for me it's a moral issue, it's not a pragmatic issue. I would argue the case for liberty because I just want to be left alone. The system doesn't give a fuck about me. About me. I turn on television, what the fuck I see. What I More see. propaganda funded by the stakeholders. I don't have a voice, I don't really have a choice no choice. I'm making money by my way until I'm free I'm But every $600 they gon' need to see ID Created regulation only protected the corporations Preventing competition then expecting high taxation Tax Getting taxed to get funding so my neighbors hate me Created identity, politics and no way to stop the hunger For real change from a system meant to enslave Money printer buried American dream in a shallow grave Not the next man, blame the blind man yeah. Two brothers in common but we gon' Fight man, Your team fight, ain't man. my team, so we fucking gang, gang, gang. Instead gang. of realizing that we both getting fucked, man. Rah. Your money turns worthless, and the bankers fucking laugh. Half the Fed to provide liquidity till the balance sheet look like a meme coin grab. And then they started chanting, and the Fed. You see, and inflation robs you, your and children, the fair, and the their fair. children's Rah. ability and to have a good standard of living. Ever since 1971, fair, systematically, it's been created to make you a and debt slave, fair, so you don't fair. have a good standard of living. And shit. I just want a happy life To raise a couple of good kids with a pretty wife In a good neighborhood with a value system That makes them wise But lately I feel like all that we do is survive God help me have wisdom and all the strength Cause this world fucked up and I don't know if I can just survive Survive Y'all got me fucked up Fucked up and if it's yours against mine, we gon' rise we gon Motherfucker, rise. please, I ain't afraid to die To, to die. stand for what I believe in Promise that it doesn't matter that. to the fact You can fucking flip it back flip it How back. many times they gon' make us feel alone. feel alone Lately I feel crazy, still up in my zone, in my zone. How many times they, they gon' make us feel alone. feel alone Lately I feel crazy, still up in my zone, in my zone. They don't give a fuck about us yeah. The founding fathers had it right you give them the banks, they gon' fucking take the world. You give a man a bank, and he can rob the world. In the fair, in the fair. You give a man a bank, and he can rob the world, and he can rob the world. Vigilantes, I'm very happy right now to be sharing the stage with my business partner and friend, Mr. X. Mr. X, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Dude, I'm really happy to be here with you because it's, uh, you know, we're at the beginning of a, of a bull season now. And I, I really want to start off by explaining to people how you and I came together. So our hero, Jeff Berwick, he, he wanted to uh, create uh, the Bitcoin Vigilante around 2013 and he came to me raf let's do this and and then we kind of like faded that vibe because we, we were like well it was probably not the time but then um finally he's like raf we got to do this and, and we did it and i'm like well i can't do it by myself i'm gonna bring the best ogs that i know for this and i brought you along um and you're my you know co-producer co-partner analysts and all of this and then we brought the like best ogs and all of crypto that we know to start off the crypto vigilante alongside the experience of ed bugos and jeff berwick and it's been a it's been a, an amazing ride dude um so again hey bro i love you thank you so much for for doing this endeavor because this is really a labor of love and and it has become a the og newsletter right like the crypto bitcoin og newsletter um, when did you come into Bitcoin, bro? You came into Bitcoin like 2011, 2010, right? Yeah, it was a very early 2011. Uh, I was buying Bitcoin when it was under $1. So I've been uh, in Bitcoin and, and Monero also for quite a long time. I was quite early on both. You know, what's what's crazy about working with you guys is, is that um, you guys are not even here for the money. Um, you guys are here because you guys love the game. You guys love crypto and you guys want freedom to go up alongside number go up um so for those that don't know mr a and w are part of the crew that first charted bitcoin in the bitcoin talk forums uh this crew went on to be known as bull bear analytics you can ask any bitcoin og 
that's in the know, they'll tell you about Bull Bear Analytics. So, so that's the crew. The main dudes from Bull Bear Analytics, you know, um, some of the main dudes of Bull Bear Analytics, they don't work anymore because they're they're fucking loaded. They, they, but these guys are the guys that like still wanted to be sharp and keep their mind sharp. And they're very, um, yeah, they're very, uh, they're fucking amazing, dude. I love A&W. It's so cool that we have them on our team. And so I kind of want to, I kind of want to go through like a, um, a safari, you know, adventure with you, Mr. X, and, and talk about our different perspectives because nowhere else in crypto do we find a group that is of OGs that is so eclectic that has come together in the endeavor of teaching the world about crypto. Um, right now, we are at the start of a bull market. And correct me if I'm wrong, but, it's so, you know, some people are saying we're already in it and some people are saying that we are just barely getting started. What are your thoughts? Yeah, we're we're still pretty early. I mean, the 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 largest part of the um, the bullish market gain, I would say, usually happens after the the Bitcoin halving every four years, uh, which is expected to occur around, I believe, around April twentieth this this year. Um, and and after that event happens, we'll see. I think a lot more upside, especially now since we have ETF inflows uh, coming. Up billions of dollars are flowing into Bitcoin through that route. Um, but I know, Raphael, you and I are more excited about some of the technical developments. And, and like you said, freedom go up, in my opinion, I think, uh, why not have both? I mean, you want to have maximum freedom for each individual, um, but then also build a profit as well. And I think those uh, incentives or goals are both in alignment and can be, and I think will be more in the future. Yeah, so you, you know when you when you anyone that comes into crypto right away they find themselves with having to kind of choose where they're going to get their news or their uh, understanding. Uh, first and foremost, if you go to something that is venture capital funded, like a CoinDesk or a Coin Telegraph, you are automatically consuming from the feeding uh, trough of big tech in Silicon Valley and VC funded. Um, the capture of the Wall Streetization of crypto. You're getting their news, their bias, their perspective. Everything comes with the bias. Something very interesting has happened in the crypto vigilante, which is, is that every one of our analysts are independent thinkers. We don't all agree with one another. We all debate in the open, respectfully. We all come from very different perspectives regarding crypto. Um, and, and, and there is... And deep down, we all know that none of us have to do this for a living. So it creates an environment of OGs that are, in one sense, yes, they're flexing, they're teaching, and they're doing it because they want freedom to go up and they want to empower with knowledge as many libertarians as possible because we want a future that is uh, profitable and, and, and really a world that is freedom-oriented, you know? Um, I, I, I'll give you an example. I know a lot of people hate on Roger Ver, and I think it's ridiculous. I think Roger Ver is an incredible person. I think he he's he's fascinating to me. It is because of him being an anarcho-capitalist coming early into Bitcoin that the that the entirety of the of the development of the Bitcoin space was not um, completely captured by Silicon Valley and the big tech cartel. And a prime example of that is Kraken, right? So. So Kraken is is a, is a, is an exchange that I personally may not agree on because I I come from a different like understanding of Bitcoin than the people that run Kraken, and so does Roger Ver actually. But the truth is is that Roger Ver was the fun a fun he found he's one of the people that invested in Kraken and gave uh, Jeremy Powell the ability to have the uh, freedom to 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 have assets like Monero and champion things that are um freedom oriented so the beautiful thing is is that if you look closely at crypto you will see a divergent path between people that want to pump the bags of, of 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 the interest of blackrock and the vca and the big tech and the metas of the world and you have a, a current that is grassroots anarcho-capitalist oriented towards freedom interestingly enough when you come to the crypto vigilante you'll see that you get different uh perspectives that come from the freedom part. Mr. A and, and a lot of our in our in our TA uh, team has been very focused on the dominance that Bitcoin has 
over the market. And you, Mr. X, have been more focused on the importance of, of uh, freedom, sound digital cash, uh, fungible money like Monero, Pirate Chain, Dero, and Wow Nero. Um, would you uh, please uh, share with us in what ways you guys have a different perspective and in what ways you guys agree with each other on this very important point of inflection? Yeah, so uh, Mr. A, um, yeah, I've I've known him for a long time. Also, Mr. W, and they focus almost exclusively on, on the on the technicals, which is very important. The market is kind of showing itself in the charts. Um, people's buying and selling actions, that and that, what's actually being executed, those are being show, uh, shown in those charts, and it's very important to use those when looking at trends, looking at chart patterns, and these are all uh, psychological, behavioral events that occur over and over again. So when you see some of these chart patterns, I mean, they happen over and over again. And many times with high probability, they produce certain expected results. Those are important to, to analyze. And, and I know they, they also use some very proprietary indicators that, that no one really, no one else in the market has access to. And that's does provide a massive value for our subscribers at the crypto vigilante in regards to their perspectives on Privacy coins, Mr. A has often said that privacy is, is uh, coins are not a store of value, but Bitcoin is. In some ways, that is true, yes. When we first alerted um, Firechain, for example, um, back in early, I don't know if it was 2011 or, 2000, or 2020, but in early 2011 or 2021, I believe it was, it, um, it pumped, I guess it was 34,000, 33,640%, I believe, um, after few months after we had alerted at that point. So it does have the, the ability to make three massive gains, even against Bitcoin. But after that parabolic rise, it obviously needed uh, the past couple of years or so to retrace and, and go back down to get some of those quick money speculators out of the market. And in the future, it still has a lot of opportunity to go up, especially it's got it's going back down to basically almost the, pretty much the same level from where we alerted it in terms of Bitcoin. So if it ends up oscillating against Bitcoin back up in the future, in future bullish markets, I think that's definitely something we can see happen. I think that's a possibility. So I'm, I have not given up on Firechain. I know some people have. Um, even Mr. A has said that he doesn't think he holds any or um, and would not recommend holding any. That is certainly if you, if you want to be safe and, <laughs> and not hold and take risks, then yeah, sure, don't hold any fire chain, but then you as well also hold uh, old stocks or just hold gold or something like that. But I think you're, you're going to see when people, since there's a lot of hate, I guess, on fire chain, also most, a lot of people, I guess, the broader market doesn't even know what it is. I think that is really the time for buying it, especially since we understand that it is pretty much the most private cryptocurrency on earth, I mean, even more so than Monero at this point in time. So, um, so I would definitely recommend having some buyer chain, but that's why in our portfolio, it is a smaller allocation. So yeah, I obviously wouldn't recommend putting into uh, cryptocurrencies more than you could afford to lose, especially smaller market cap cryptocurrencies like buyer chain. So yeah, that would be, I guess, my perspective on buyer chain and how it differs from, from Mr. A. Also Monero in the past, in the, I guess, 2015 to 20. 18 or so bull cycle, um, Monero had some massive gains then as well again. Since that point, it has declined quite a bit, almost back to the lows. Can you, can you come it, a little closer to the mic, please? Sorry. Yep. Sorry. Basically, yeah, Monero had a bull market against Bitcoin. Monero's uh, chart history from, uh, I, would, I would say, 2015 or early 2016 through early 2018. It had a massive bull run against Bitcoin. Monero strongly outperformed Bitcoin, going from 0.001 BTC up to a high of uh, about a 0 0.0355 sub five BTC in late 2017, and topped out around that point in early 2018. Um, and then since that point, it has consolidated a bit and retraced. And currently is around 
just under 0.002 UTC. So that's basically more than, in terms of Bitcoin, more than a 90% loss um, during that time period. So, but I think the fact that it's back, right back down to that multi-year support level, and also the fact that it's uh, gaining fundamental usage and adoption and that its fundamentals are, I would say, stronger than ever and are actually getting stronger with the development of full-chain membership proofs, which is being worked on as we speak, um, and Seraphis, um, all these upgrades that will make it much more private. Um, and and as, uh, it, it has also solved some of the scalability issues in regards to um, uh, dynamic box sizes, um, also the... Uh, the fees are much cheaper than Bitcoin. BTC is has much higher fees, especially when the network gets congested. But um, Monero has had consistently had fees, usually a penny or less, <laughs> quite often, from my experience. So, um, and also interestingly, Monero also has skyrocketed in its uh, usage as well, going to uh, about one hundred forty thousand transactions in one day this past. That is so, amazing. That is that is, yeah, so, that is that is that is that is bullish, dude. Um, yeah. So so and, and when you look at Metcalf's law, which is something I wrote about in last month's newsletter, um, the usage of the network, its value goes up as more people are using it, more people are being connected within it. Um, so that alone shows that when, when you calculate Bitcoin's uh, daily transaction counts and price compared with Monero's daily transaction counts supply also, sorry also factoring supply for both of those the the fair price for monero would be um over nineteen thousand dollars per point so so monero at this point um since it's only worth about 125 dollars or so is in the last hour um that shows that um yeah i mean it's massively undervalued so you're basically buying what should be a nineteen thousand dollar coin in five or so dollars so monero most people as you said like the the mainstream crypto media does not really talk about Monero. you're not going to find tons of Monero articles on coindesk or cointelegraph um and the incentives i mean that people that have long been owners of some of those entities like uh, barry silver who is the owner of the venture capital uh, investor behind coindesk for many years um, they would actually suppress Monero articles and write positive articles about Zcash instead because they had invested. Oh, yeah. Cash. But, but Zcash has had a horrible uh, price history, too. I remember the day it launched, uh, some of us made money um, on its launch during the brief spike, but then cashed out quickly. And, yeah, uh, but the, and bled, you, you know, the truth is, is that the truth is, is that the entire crypto space is being psyoped up by these VCs. Like if I think everybody should become extremely acquainted with crunchbase.com and they should start learning how to follow the money. And when you see something that comes out from anything in crypto, you should see who's really behind it and, you know, follow the money. You'll see what, what the, where the interests really lie. But what, what I've seen is that VCs are dumping on Main Street constantly in, in Bitcoin. They're bringing the same antics that they brought from Wall Street and, and, be, and just the VC mindset and bringing it here. You know, the, the market, um, the overall market is their exit liquidity. And so, um, you know, so you have to be aware, first and foremost, that crypto is is a game where there's people t constantly trying to sign up other people. Um, and sorry for cutting you off, dude, but I, I personally am more. Um, so I agree with you, but, you know, believe it or not, surprise, surprise, I agree with Mr. A. At, to a certain degree, Mr. X, more. And the reason why is because I take Mr. A's arguments to their logical conclusions. And I he, he his point is, is that BTC is outperforming these privacy coins. So then my focus is on like, well, what's what's actually outperforming BTC itself? And and that's why, and that's where I that's where I farm, that's where I I I capitalize and I focus on those things, which is really the on-chain world, ordinals, bitmap. Um, that is really where I focus because I know that that yields more than BTC itself. 
and it comes from BTC itself. So it's it's a like a vampire attack that is using the BTC network effect, their the BTC uh, liquidity pool of of BTC itself, and using it as as a, a marketplace where you siphon wealth from BTC out into networks that are more fundamentally sound. So I'll give you an example for me. I would much rather, uh, uh, Bitcoin is at all time high levels right now, BTC. I'd rather much rather farm from with, inside BTC, take the gains and put it into things that are fundamentally sound that are undervalued, like a pirate chain, like a Monero, like a wow narrow, like a Darrow, and accumulate those bags that are not in all time high levels. Does that make sense? Like, um, and the, the reason why Mr. X is because by following Mr. A's logical conclusions of, 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 of making sure that, that if you're going to be in an altcoin, if you're going to be in an, uh, you, you should be in something that is outperforming BTC. Um, I, my dopamine levels have been altered to where now a 500%, a uh, 500,000% gain is normal for me. Like a, a 2x gain is not, is, is to me, is like, you know? So it's like the on-chain world has changed my dopamine to demand a, a, a percentage gain like of an Ordi that's like between 3 million percent and 9 million percent gains. Do you understand? So like, I don't, I don't, um, I don't gravitate towards a uh, to thinking of BTC as a place that will outperform altcoins. Yeah, maybe it will eventually outperform altcoins in 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 Bitcoin's dominance throughout the bull the the rest of the bull cycle. But there is another world that's already here that is outperforming Bitcoin itself. So it's it's um that allows me to take advantage of bitcoin dominance in the market by extracting and 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 wealth from within the bitcoin and put and taking that wealth and farming it into things that are fundamentally more valuable do you see what i mean and that's a place where the vcs can't rug me that's a place where um vcs have no control and that's a place that is grassroots oriented so my personal uh, perspective is that I stay within like things that are grassroots that are fundamentally sound and that yield a lot more. So ordinals is not something that came out of the venture capital world. Although the VCs have come in and tried to like, you know, mirror us, copy us, pretend to be us. And Monero is not something that comes from the venture capital world, as you all well said. So notice that you have the, the 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 ordinals world on one end which is and and even solana meme coins right solana meme coins which have yielded a lot for a lot of people that are having fun on things like pump that fun they're yielding a lot there it's a place that is not controlled by vcs although solana was uh created by vcs but it's not a, it's the, the the marketplaces that are from within solana are also feeding off the carcass of Solana, just as much as Ordinals is feeding off the carcass of BTC. And then people can then gain profits that they, they can put into things that are grassroots, fundamentally um, sound. So it's a, it's a constant game that I see that we're, we're, we're playing many games here. And, and the fact that, you know, we have different analysts coming from different perspectives allows me and our subscribers to see like those who are playing at the highest level of every game, how they're approaching the market. Because I know you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't mess around with ordinals, do you? You never have, really, right? Like you stay away um, from it. I, I've actually played with, well, not ordinals as much, but doginals. I, I have, I have gotten some doginals and, and played with. Yeah, uh, but you, would you say that you're like tokens. a full time degenerate, like in it constantly? No, no. Right? Well, and I was gonna say also like some atomicals. I've got some of those, like like. Uh, Mr. Z has written about in our newsletter as well, but but as far as the ordinals, I was not early on the ordinals like you were, so and and kind of sat that out for for a while. You know, if but you yeah, yeah, I, I sh it would have been smart to to get in though from for that for the um, the profits there. Sure. But if you if you think about it, look, um, yeah, it was profitable, but for someone that is highly intelligent, 
something like ordinals seems very stupid you know like it's not a monero you know what i'm saying like this is fucking awesome right like well, yeah it doesn't have the it doesn't it's... have the the utility or the um i guess the same type of utility and practical usage i guess of, like accepting i mean yeah, it doesn't have any privacy so i mean and the privacy thing was something that i in 2015 or so 2016 around that point um i really dove deep into that and was became pretty convinced that um that uh, surveillance coins is not not good for humanity's future uh, freedom um and we don't want to be in a dystopian surveillance state which is really coming and rising more with, especially with the rise of the blockchain analytics companies so um, even playing in the on-chain economy realm you have to have take into account operational security and that's another huge thing that we cover at the crypto vigilante um uh, making sure Follow, yeah, I don't think point, anyone. Point I don't control think, practices. No one teaches that shit. Like no one else in crypto teaches it. No, no, no one. We teach it. No one well, else. Yeah, no, no one covers that along with the um the top technical analysts in the world as well. Like we have uh, with Mister Mister W. Um. So, so yeah, it's the, the crypto vigilante offers something definitely unique. Sure. You know the 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 crazy thing I was thinking the other day that if I wasn't like part of the crypto vigilante I would be a a, a subscriber myself because of you guys. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I get so much out of you guys, dude. Like it's crazy, dude. Because look, I don't have time, and this is what happens to everybody in crypto. Everybody in crypto, um, that is developing or investing in crypto has a. You don't have time to look at everything, right? So anybody oh, yeah. that comes yeah, to everyone crypto, spe we specialize. We, we everyone is specialized. Special. So if you're a private, I mean, person, and and without you, we wouldn't even we would not be in ordinals. We wouldn't have got into or, or atomicals, ordinals, all these other things. And we were the first ones uh, because of your um, your alerting us about that. Right, right when it was actually being invented. So, well, if um, you think about it, no one in the world like in, that that is outside of crypto vigilante has a time to like look at everything. Right, I don't okay. have time to look at everything. Like. The reason why I was able to get in early on Ordi and Bitmap and get our subscribers in early on those was because I have you guys, because you guys are watching my back. You're covering privacy with Mr. P. A and W are doing technical analysis and focusing on DeFi and altcoins, like like the altcoin chart that Mr. A put out to our VIX subscribers, that thing has been mooning, right? And it's um Oh, you're, you're talking about the, just, the, the altcoin uh, list. Yeah, his, his altcoin yeah. list is up hundreds of percent against Bitcoin. And this is at the same time while Bitcoin is is pumping. So exactly. And um, we've had so yeah. and we've had like the DeFi watch list for Mr. W as well, which did very good last cycle as well. And then we have like Mr. And then I've been able to venture into things that are extremely exotic, like ordinals. Like now I'm into meme coins. Like if if I was if I was manning a newsletter on my own, there's no way I would be able to cover everything. And so the average Joe out there, you have to understand the competitive advantage that we have at the crypto vigilante. The average Joe out there, um, can doesn't have like if they fall into Solana, they become a Solana expert, Ethereum expert, and that's the world that they're in. If you're a, if you're into XRP, then you stay in XRP and you go into Cardano into that world. If you're a BTC person. Well, you you have to make a real big big choice. You know, am I going to be a big blocker or a small blocker? Well, a lot of the money that BlackRock is pumping into is going into BTC. So a lot of people go into BTC. They buy the worldview of BTC. They become BTC maximalists. And then when they're positioned with something that comes from the big blocker world within BTC, like Ordinals, and they're like, "What the fuck? Now, how do I manage this?" And then. You have a, a crypto world that is by default very tribal. And I think that a lot of intelligence agencies and governments have realized that, um, well, they're experts at human behavior and, and they know how pliable the human attention span is. And so it's easy to sigh up people. So people that are seeking freedom in, in crypto um, have come to the realization that they are constantly under the threat of being psyoped. And I'm talking about in all chains, every aspect, you, everyone's trying to, everybody's trying to psyop you. There's a lot of money. Like you, you guys have to understand that there is, that if crypto wins, then the fiat cartel is over. Do you understand what that means? It means that, it means that financial slavery for humanity is over. So don't be surprised by the fact that BlackRock is all of a sudden BTC's hero. 
Like that is not just a happenstance thing that that Larry Fink once said. Oh my God! Oh, Bitcoin! I just discovered it. Great investment. I'm gonna I'm gonna go into it. It's no coincidence that all of a sudden you have a poster boy for Wall Street like Michael Saylor saying, "Oh my God! I'm just gonna base my company around investing in BTC." No, 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 no. It's BTC as it is is safe for them. It's been designed to be a safe haven for them where they can have the dominant narrative going forward, where they can manipulate the masses by infusing more printed money from the fiat from the Federal Reserve into their chosen cryptocurrencies to divert attention because they know that human attention is pliable. They know that human attention is 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 uh easily to it can be easily psyop because they trained you. Their educational system trained you. Their media, their Hollywood has trained you, has conditioned you to be someone who is not virtuous enough to see beyond the, 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 the bullshit that they pose forward. And they filled your mind with a huge sense of scarcity to the point that they have you as a Bitcoiner considering yourself a pleb. Literally, that's how a lot of BTC maxes, maxis um, consider themselves like they're inferior people to someone. I don't know who the fuck they think they're more inferior. But to me, as a Bitcoiner, I have more. I have a completely different understanding. Like I am more powerful than BlackRock. Like straight up, like you as a Monero person are more powerful than the government of China. Do you understand the difference of mindset here? Like yeah, well, I, we, we're not well, slaves anymore to their bullshit. So you have to understand that they have they they know this, and so they're gonna try to psyop you in crypto. Okay, like that's you have to understand that that has been by design something that these lizards have been aiming for. Because they know that if you, as a crypto community, understand the power that you have, they know that you will put them out of business. You will put Facebook out of business. You will put Elon Musk out of business. You will. You will. You, you, you will put them out of business. You will put BlackRock out of business. And that scares them. So they have to feed you like a crackhead, like a meth addict. They have to feed you your drug. Because they've put you into the scarcity mindset for many years of like, I need to survive. I have this slavery of nine to five. Therefore, oh man, you know, like they're playing with you. They're toying with you. And, and something very interesting, Mr. X, that I want to share with you that I have found is, is that the meme coin world, the world that takes the seriousness out of finance and brings fun into finance is a way of mimetically rebelling against the system of control. It, and it, and it, you have to understand the value of this from a mimetic perspective. And I think, again, every time they try to capture humanity, humanity finds a way to escape that PSYOP. They tried to capture BTC with BlackRock now dominating it and controlling the, 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 the majority shares of all of its mining pools with BlackRock ETF being the hero and the savior for BTC. And you see what happened with ordinals that the grassroots world came in and now are like, okay, we'll play this game, but we will psyop you in return. You can't get rid of us, uh, Jack Dorsey. You can't get rid of us, Luke Dasher. And we will consume wealth outside into out of Bitcoin, BTC, and put it into things that are more fundamentally sound. And so um, the same thing is happening from the mimetic perspective of who controls the attention? And so a lot of people are now talking about how pump that fund is nothing more than the 4chan of crypto. But in reality, what is happening here is, is that just as the blockchain and proof of work in the UTXO model was created to free the market, art, art frees the mind. And so pump that fund, I see it as an act of rebellion that is very valuable, very important. Because it shows people something very new, which is that we already won. And I'll give you the perfect example. The dollar bill looks very serious, right? The Federal Reserve, and when you go into the boomer corporate world, you wear a tie. You have to present yourself with a noose around your neck as subservient to the establishment. That's all it means. You're... You're fucking hangman. That's all it means. You're you're their bitch. That's all it means. I'm sorry to tell you the truth, guys, but if you're working on Wall Street, if you have a nine to five, you're the system's bitch. That's just a simple thing. And so the counter 
um, rebellion to that was always a, a very serious mimetic, right? Look at look at the Monero mimetic, right? Look at that seriousness, right? You got that guy Fox, that rebellion. That's um go protest at Wall Street, right? That's what that is, right? But when you have pumped out fun and you have like dog with hat, or even or other funnier ones, right? That I'm not gonna mention here because of people's sensitivities, but you just go to go pump that fun and, and you'll see what I'm talking about. You take the seriousness out of the equation because now you've pushed um all of the seriousness, even the seriousness of Monero back. And you're like, this doesn't even have to be serious anymore. Like this is our playground. We have fun. We call the shots here. We run this show. It's not BlackRock. It's not Meta. It's not Facebook. We don't need them to save us. We don't even need their ETF. We can take care of our own. Our miners, our BTC miners, we can be more profitable. We can produce capital goods and consumer goods on chain that can profit the miners better than any than anything BlackRock can bring by creating an on-chain economy with ordinals that can never be taken away. And that fucking pisses them off. They try to censor ordinal transactions, did they not, at the end of 2023, and they were not able to get rid of it, right? Why? Because it, it hurts their PSYOP. Because they wanted BlackRock to call the shots. And all of a sudden, these grassroots came in, and now we call the shots. Like, notice how, Mr. X, on having day, which is, I think, April 20th or April 19th, the Ordinals community will be putting out the Runes Protocol. I am right now finishing up a book where I teach people, I give them all of the insights regarding this on-chain new world of crypto. And then I get them prepared within the book to be ready for the rules protocol. So if you're not a crypto vigilante subscriber, you need to be one because it, I'm going to be putting it this out next week. It's coming out and you got to be ready for the launch of the rules protocol. Um, this is, this is, uh, this is, this is grassroots. Although the VCs are very slick, right? They're what they do, man. Let me tell you something, Mr. X. They try to come into BTC ordinals and they try to position themselves as uh as part of the of the grassroots vibe, but they're not. They're not. They're not. It's it's funny. Um, sorry for for going on a tangent there, man. But but do you, I want to see. I want to know if you understand where I'm coming from, right? So you have rebellion coming from different perspectives, right? You have the rebellion of the right side of the curb. I'm gonna put up the chart. The right side of the curb, right? The smart, the 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 Jedi Knights like yourself, the Moneros, the Wow Neros, the Daros, the pirate chains, right? That is the right side of the curb, you know, the that and then you have the left side of the curb that also has a rebellion, as you see with ordinals, as you see with uh meme coins and pop pump that fun, right? So it's like you have um rebellion happening in many in different perspectives of crypto. And and I, I and, and that's really where I personally like like to sit back and and play. Because I don't want to be playing the game of the VC that has the upper hand. And that is an expert at rugging me and rugging you and rugging your family and your friends and your loved ones like they've been doing through all of human history. Like, I don't want to be part of the lizard game. The lizards are in crypto and I don't want to be part of them. So, um, yeah, bro. What are your thoughts, Mr. X? Sorry for uh, the long tangent there. Uh, well, uh, something you mentioned earlier just kind of made me think a little bit. You were saying the, um, like the Larry Fink, BlackRock and, and Sailor they're all happy to promote Bitcoin because I mean, it's completely surveilled and, and tracked and traced and, and, and they're collecting lots of taxes on it and going after a lot of people that aren't paying their taxes because they can see all their activity on the blockchain. Um, I mean, there's a whole conglomerate of uh, blockchain analytics companies all with multi-million dollar contracts from the government, many multiple governments, but especially the U S government, many departments within the government agencies, all, um, paying millions of dollars to these blockchain analytics companies, which are um, uh, connecting people's uh, cryptocurrency wallet addresses with their real world identities and um, enforcing tax collection from them. So this is a major issue that's going to only get worse. Um, and cryptocurrencies like Monero, Firechain, Dero, Wow Nero, um, these are really the only way um, freely transact and, and adopt a type of a sound money outside of that system in a parallel economy, which is what we absolutely need for uh, humanity to flourish.
I completely agree with you. But you also know that I have another perspective, right? Yes, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, you I, want to I, explain I say, to them my I, perspective? Well, I, I disagree. Explain to them my perspective. Well, yeah, I know you disagree, yeah, but you, well, yeah, what's my yeah, perspective? We, we, we disagree. Well, yeah, there's even other stuff that you said earlier that I disagreed some parts with, but I know we kind of agreed previously that we weren't going to get into No, 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 by all means, you can talk debates, about it, though. man. It's cool, it's cool, it's cool. <laughs> but, uh, no, well, I, we don't I, have I, to I mean, talk about it, but but the truth is, guys, is that I I I have I I understand Mr. X's perspective of the importance of privacy, but I do have well, sound money really. Right, I, money. I, we need we need sound money, uh, yeah. but I also think we need accountability and we need a global truth ledger, uh, powered by proof of work. I think we need a Solana that is based on proof of work, that scales on chain. Yeah, I mean, if if, if if I agree with that in the sense that if we could force the government to only use Bitcoin <laughs> and all the people to use Monero. Um, that would be kind of the ideal scenario there. But I don't think, I mean, the CIA and all the, all these, these, uh, organ these agencies that are already breaking laws and mass, um, they're going to just keep using cash or an arrow or things like that. So I don't see them. It would be difficult. How are we, how would we force them to, to use Bitcoin? But, but yeah, I, I understand. Well, it's, it's I mean, about, and you'll you, say that it'll forcing be forcing anyone. Well, yeah, you, yeah, you would say it's a market. Even Monero you're, you're and kind of Monero them. and something that is, you know, like a big block Bitcoin. That's that's a scalable Bitcoin. Um, it's not about forcing anyone. It's by just having uh, a proposition in the market that is profitable for for all. Well, yeah, I know. Well, yeah, that, your perspective you is that it will happen through market forces. That it somehow they will be forced through the market to use like like a well, we yeah, have some other big block coin of which we cannot speak. No, but, I can uh, speak about it. It's called BSV. Oh, yeah, 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 BSV. I love yeah. BSV. Yes. Okay. But the thing but, is, yeah, but I just like we disagree. Said, we, we disagree. Like, and the other cool, analysts and disagree cool. with disagree. With. Yeah, like it's okay. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Yeah, we don't want to get into go go into the can of worms of. Craig Wright or you should right. not be named. I, what a scammer, right? Anyways, yeah. so uh, what I'm what I'm saying here is is that what I'm saying here is is that I think that that was the that was what was going to happen eventually with Bitcoin. I think eventually uh, that was the path forward, and and that's why Bitcoin was co opted the way it was. Like Crypto Bear, the Monero rapper says. You know, I got banned on Reddit for wanting big blocks when the hackers start giving TED Talks, you know, like the reason why a lot of the motivation behind why Monero came to be is not just because it's fungible, fungible money, because there's a lot of Bitcoiners that wanted to do that within within Bitcoin. They wanted to make Bitcoin more fungible, like Samurai Wallet, Sparrow Wallet. That's even people in Bitcoin Cash with Cash Fusion. Like there has been a Monero comes from Bitcoin. You have to understand that Monero. Yeah, yeah. I applaud those efforts. A Bitcoin person. Yeah, yeah. And well, even Daniel Krawitz, who has kind of reversed his position, or e and even interestingly, I found the old video from Craig Wright where he was saying how he's going to make Bitcoin private and and traceable, anonymous, etc. But but of course, that position was flipped as well. <laughs> well do, do you really want to talk about that? I, I think I think honestly, my perspective on that is that the dude is under the gun and he's supposed to flip. Otherwise, him and his life and his family is in danger. He was supposed to flip, but we don't have to talk about that. Um, so oh, yeah, um, yeah, I, I know you're, yeah, you explained my perspective that Actually, is, is that you know, after yeah. being doxxed, he had to flip. And so he was owned by them. And then he had to play, a, a, he had to pantomime all the bullshit in order to get out. It's kind of like if you become a government informant, but you, oh, yeah, I, yeah, I know your tells perspective you to do is, to the point true. that you, that you like, you, 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 you have plausible deniability of like, I did what you mm -hmm. wanted me to do as an informant. I'm sorry. Our plan didn't work out. But in reality, you 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 fucked up the plan that the government had on purpose to save Bitcoin. But that's another conversation. We can talk about it later. Uh, these are my research theories, and and you can disagree with them. Yeah, but I was gonna say, and, and if you're a subscriber, you, you can read you my like. my my refutation of all those theories. <laughs> uh, but we, yeah, we, we've, been, we've been we've been kind of debating this for years since the beginning. Actually, even what? before the beginning of the crypto. Because it's the most important topic in all the crypto, bro. It's because the reason why Monero exists is because they didn't allow us to have fungible digital money in Bitcoin. And so notice how the development of BTC started being molded. Into and, and not even just the fungible digital money, but also the dynamic block size. I mean, Monero has better scaling than Bitcoin. Um, yeah, but the, why, why the can't we have dynamic block size. block size in Bitcoin? 
Even right because now, because it would have to be forked, it would have to be required. What's hard wrong fork. with that? And then also, a tail emission would be that? really There's nothing needed wrong with to, that. to it was allow that. Wait, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Properly. Bitcoin was was also altered in order to not have a dynamic block size. Like the cap for one megabyte was something that Hal Finney convinced Satoshi to add. So it wasn't the original design. And Satoshi said, "When the, the well, yeah, see, now, mature, now we're getting into the debate yeah. of, of historical when, when, when Bitcoin's more mature, we'll take debate. off the cap, you know, because Bitcoin, like he said in the beginning, Satoshi can scale to to to, to the world from block one. It, it was ready and designed to scale to the masses. So we we already had um the idea that Bitcoin, in its original design, could scale. People have we we can add not the level of anonymity as something like." like Monero or Pirate Chain, but we can add a significant amount of privacy to Bitcoin. So the, the reason why Monero exists is because they didn't, because there were forces, there were energies that I, that song, Monero extremist, dude, from, I like how rappers like give you history and, and uh, in psychology and sociology, you learn that the word on the street is more than likely the truest affirmation of what is really happening in reality. And notice how Crypto Bear exposes how, how he became a Monero extremist. And this was a lot of the motivation behind Monero because he was censored. He was uh, blacklisted. Him and a lot of people in Bitcoin were told, no, you can't do this here. And if you don't, if you don't agree with us, fuck you. Like, get out of here. Like, that well, was the vibe. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so like, during that, that block size war, I, I was at, at that point, I had already become part of a Monero extremist, I guess, before yeah, that. The block size war happened. has it had our, had however, before. no, the block size war, no, that was 2017. Monero. Right, right. No, but the, the block size war started in 2013. Well, you're right. 2013, bro. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, that part did. But I meant the, the, I meant the actual war. Oh, well, when, the, but that was just that. Which was later. Just but, the, but, but in regards to, but I, but I agree with you in the sense that, that yeah, censoring people, yeah, I don't, I, I, I was definitely opposed to that. I'm, I, some people well, say, well, oh, yeah, I'm, single... I'm a small blocker, but I'm, I mean, I, I tended to think that smaller blocks did have some benefits. Um, but anyway, that's a whole nother discussion, but, but, every, every but I'm not a blocker, small blocker. Every single big blocker or... was completely, uh, has been in his, in crypto history. Every single big blocker has been bullied and crucified. If they don't, if they, and, and you see this dude from the moment, I remember the moment it happened, dude, it was the moment that, that Gavin Andreessen had that meeting with the CIA. And then I remember that. Yep. Yeah, I remember when that happened. Everyone was right going away, crazy dude, on the, the, on the forums Everything and, changed. Yeah. And he, and you see that Gavin is kind of like, fuck, like he has to back away. He's like back paddle slowly. Holy shit. Because dude, you are again, Bitcoin and crypto was designed to take down the fucking establishment. Do you understand what that means? Oh yeah, and then absolutely. You, did you well, have the leak emails? Well, a lot of the reason why was because we thought it was anonymous magic internet money, and then we realized it wasn't. So that's no, no, why it was anonymous. Was no, 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 it was anonymous. That's, that's that's just that's my perspective. No, in, it was in everyone that I've seen. Well, Mr. X, like five, ten well, years. Wasn't, from now, it was never years anonymous. People, the state of Monero. Basically, people didn't realize Monero won't be private enough 10, 20 years from now. You understand? Like, you well, have with the full chain membership proofs, it will be. I think. Well, yeah, even it'll be it'll it'll be innovated continuously. Well, the. Membership proves to be quantum resistant. Well, that's the thing. They're going to be adding all those people. Have actually, okay, you see, think, it's, it's yeah, you've a, actually this done process, inter bro. interviews at at, at a Monero or Monero right. Con. But this Monerotopia. is a process, bro. It's not. It's not like those it's not like quantum cryptographers. They're going to be adding. Them. Yeah, it is a process. Right, bro. But but the underlying protocol layer level of Bitcoin was already the protocol of Bitcoin was already nimble enough to allow you to do all of that from day one. On top well, of that, it, it's not, that's the thing. Bitcoin is BTC that. is ossified so much that it, there it would be no, unless no, everyone agreed consider, exactly how to add. No, those no, I, I don't consider BTC it, the, the original be. protocol. You know, like I don't consider actually even BTC people. Oh, I know you like don't. Cole, Bra Cole <laughs> just himself, about, that dude just Cole himself BTC. that managed the B Bitcoin talk forums. He himself said that they should write a new, they should write a new um white paper for BTC. So BTC is not the original Bitcoin that gave the awareness to the masses of it being freedom money. If anything, what these people that have been psyoped in BTC and literally paid hush money to to like pump BTC and now have BlackRock as their hero and their daddy, these people, um, they don't have the same mindset of what gave Bitcoin the the power that it did in the in the world. I mean, the power that Bitcoin comes comes from a, a loving. A, a energy of freedom that's oriented towards freedom now they see themselves as like this 
this class of like oligarchs that that you know like what was it I, I there's this dude that i quoted uh today on the channel he said something like bitcoin is what bitcoin creates a new elite sovereignty, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, actually, sovereignty it, it, does not mean for everyone like wait a fucking minute bro i'm not coming to bitcoin to power up blackrock more like do you understand like when when did this shit change like i'm not well, here yeah, the whole, to make for me, the whole strategy money. has been that like, you no, dump no. your dump your, your btc on blackrock wait for them to buy it up pump it up and then you dump no, it on see, them that's part of the psyop bro that's part of you the get it's monero though that's no that's thing. that's all part of the psyop because you're still working within their system so you've never no, left no, the you, you sell you can at sell that point you've never left the plantation the base yeah, trade is still the yeah, dollar. Mr. A is not on anyone's plantation, but he no, no, I know, I know, he, I know. He, but, he but makes it's... actual wealth. You know, I mean, that's the thing. We we, we also mm -hmm. exist to make actual. Yeah, but not more than what I have made and what a but, lot of people have made who have stepped out of the plantation. About, yeah, and, yeah, liquid and assets have actually that people used... can and purchase but, homes, real estate, real goods and services. Not, yeah, you can purchase. Like, yeah, you can you can do that with Bitcoin. But when you use Bitcoin, the cryptocurrency as the base trading pair, when you have that as the base trading pair of your life. And you disconnect from Monero. fiat, yeah, from the fiat world. Ideally, Monero, especially if you're in a tyrannical uh, location. Yeah, but you've already exp explained how Mo even Monero has been psyop and has been kept down on purpose by people who I, feel no, I, by I it. No, I don't. Not quite. I, I'm, well, you, you said I mean, it earlier. Yeah, well, right? yeah it's that, attempt that, to be psyop. Yeah, well, people, and I wouldn't say that the it's example of people are trying being to. Pumped, to right? Yeah, that, I'm talking about being news censored, media. Right? That's not. Okay. Point so, telegraph does not equal Monero, though. That's not doesn't mean Monero is not. It means no, that people no, there's people no, attempting to set the masses about Monero. Okay, it's not exactly. you said Monero was set up. Exactly. That's exactly. I'm not saying Monero. But not itself. Monero itself. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Just so, trying to so like, so you 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 are always going to have this war of people psyoping, trying to psyop each other, and you have to understand that at the crypto vigilante, our main focus is freedom go up. You know, like I, I. Well, yeah, and, and going back that, to what you said earlier point, about, like, about some of the, the Bitcoin BTC people that are, are kind of tyrannical. Like, uh, well, obviously, you you know Max Kaiser, and I know you disagree with him on things, and I do as well. Um, I mean, yeah, there's something to me that, that guy's like that dude is but, a yeah, exactly. So, so, so this tweet that he just put out, there's a tweet he just put out today. He's uh, saying that he actually is advocating for more tyranny. He, he says Javier Malay is making a rookie mistake of lumping Bitcoin in with crypto. That sets his agenda back by years. President Nayib Bukele understands uh, Bitcoin on a deep level, never made this mistake in past laws, clear, clearly stipulating that everything that is not BTC is an unregistered security. And that was tweeted April 2nd, so actually yesterday. But um, but you see, you see, I guess in, my, in, point, at the my same point time, in that context is that so, so, Malay, so, so, yeah, that's why there's literally a town in Argentina, Monero, Monero town by Beretta, yeah. which actually is using Monero, right? But in yeah, El Salvador, apparently, allegedly in El Salvador, Monero would be an unregistered security, which is it's clearly not. It's a proof of work cryptocurrency that was fairly launched. Um, so it's definitely not a security by any means. But um, uh, <laughs> so the point MK, is, Max Kaiser is, 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 is no, incorrect. Don't, call, don't even use his name, bro. We're going to call him Little MK Ultra. OK, that's it. He's Little MK. His initials that's funny yeah I, he's little mk ultra okay so yeah little he, MK. he he his bitcoin maxi uh went too close to the sun there and, and he's incorrect he's incorrect on no, that bro but. he and that's the problem x is is that the psyops that you're dealing with come from very demonic places dude like like you have to understand that like we are not dealing with issues that are just on this world and like blah blah no bro this is a spiritual fight you know it really is like you, you have to understand that like a dude like me, I'm in constant prayer, bro. I know you are too. And a lot of people have this idea that us like crypto guys, libertarian anarchist guys are these like, like dudes that are like, oh, fuck it. No, bro. Like we're, we, we, we're very um much based in natural law and like we, we know and non aggression that principle. None, yeah, no. To be honest, bro, we, we are we are. I mean, and, that, and using that get, the government, that get our, so so our energy from God, bro, straight up. Yeah, like, and you you've talked about this before with El Salvador. I mean, that's actually tyrannical. What's what's happening there? You were I remember you were on stage and and debating. I'm trying to remember. You you remember that one? Bro, one where you're debating and talking bro, about how El Salvador is actually bro, caused the, the some tyranny the because devil? they're not they're not even using Bitcoin properly, but they're forcing the state is trying to force people to use that, and, and he's forcing by the state uh, to use a surveillance coin. Um, or even 
technically, I guess the state is holding the Bitcoin and then they're just using some other shit coin yeah, on dude, top it's, of that, it's, basically. It's yeah, distorted like a CBDC because CBDC. that's what the devil does, bro. And and, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm being honest, bro. I'm just, any, if you guys don't care, I talk yeah, this it's way. A I'm distortion. Just, okay, fuck. It's a distortion and a perversion of something that it is very beautiful. What well, was good, yeah. Exactly. That's what the devil yeah. does. He can't create. He can only distort and pervert. And so these technologies will there be they are they are going to be even greater psyops to try to distort and pervert what these technologies are to the world so you these technologies will either usher in wealth prosperity and freedom to everyone or they will be a tool of oppression and tyr and tyranny so it is your choice where your energy goes where your focus goes your energy flows and so you have to Make a conscious awareness uh, decision of like, where am I putting my energy in crypto, right? And you have to understand that the vast majority of crypto, of the crypto space is already captured by Wall Street, big tech and Silicon Valley. And that's pretty much on every chain. On every chain, it, actually it is, on every chain, you have an element of that. And it's a, it, you have to discern what aspects of that network are energy are our 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 freedom go up and number go up and what energy within that network are tyranny go up because look i'm telling you straight up guys look i can go in through every single cryptocurrency and i can give you examples of tyranny go up and i can go through every single cryptocurrency and give you examples of number go up of uh freedom go up crazy enough we we are uh, the, the grassroots in crypto we have realized that freedom go up is more profitable than just number go up. So no one that's a BTC maximalist made the gains that my homies and I rocking with ordinals on BTC itself did. They, none of them. They've never made these fucking gains unless you were an OG buying these things with Jeff Berwick and, 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 and like the, and Mr. X in like 2010. And buying Bitcoin at, at like sing, like single digit. Yeah, if you, you, you're not going to fucking see these gains. Mining these Bitcoin, fucking... like 50 Bitcoin blocks on your laptop in like 2010 or 2009 or 10 or something. <laughs> then yeah, yeah, you wouldn't have seen those types of percentage gains. Yeah. Most likely. yeah, so 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 like you have to understand that like you this these technologies are very precious. And that's why they're worth talking about teaching about and that's our job here our job is that of educators we're educating you guys okay you can do with this with these technologies whatever you want and we have a, the most eclectic group of ogs in the entire space not even like you guys like no fucking newsletter does what we do but fold down they, they can't they can't compute this shit like who's really popular let's say uh like andrew tate right he's really popular right and he's all over the internet and he has his own like i guess his own like crypto vibe you know crypto thing but he, they're not, not none of those dudes none of those dudes are are ogs like us none of them none andrew tate himself came into the crypto in 2018 so do you understand that like we have the dudes that first charted bitcoin in the B bitcoin talk forums do you understand that like we don't even have to do this shit i i, I don't have to do this shit for a living guys i'm done the reason i'm here is because I want freedom to go up. But I know that freedom won't go up unless freedom number goes up with freedom. So I have to align the incentives of freedom with number go up. And what I've discovered is that freedom going up is more profitable than number go up. And the example is found in ordinals. Like they, they really thought they had, BlackRock really thought Jack Dorsey really thought that they had Bitcoin captured. They really did. They really, really fucking did. And that's why they freaked out. Oh, and yeah, you're, yeah. They tried to get rid of us. But they can't censor us, with bro. That, um, yeah, with that, that, um, well, yeah, with that mining pool, they tried to censor the uh, ordinal transactions, but that was an epic fail, which was pretty funny to watch. <laughs> yeah, it's an epic fail because that's what I'm trying to tell you, X. Like, you have to realize that Satoshi gave us, like, a, like, the most beautiful uh, ingredients in technology that we can play with. So our job is to grab those ingredients and make the best recipes for freedom possible. 
what are the lizards doing? The lizards, what they do is, is that they see that Satoshi inherently made, gave you the, the playground and all the contingent factors and the best ingredients to produce more freedom and ever more freedom and ever more freedom and bring people closer together, open the market more, uh, incentivize freedom, make tyranny ever more costly. He gave us that. So what they did, like the devil does, distorts that shit. Like, I bet you anything, X, like, I, um, like a lot of evil people are going to do really evil things with Monero. And they're going to use that propaganda to censor Monero even more. You see what I mean? Because and they're going to distort the fact that Monero is something that is a good tool. And they're going to focus on the nasty, uh, on very ugly, demonic things. I mean, yeah, there's evil people will have, do with Monero. Have, you see what I mean? Yeah, have done evil things with Monero, Bitcoin, but most of all with fiat currency, though. So uh, the no, thing no, is, it's, it's just it's, a tool. So if you use, you I, I can use a tool for good or, or evil. Same thing with Tor, the Tor network. I mean, that's a anonymous, uh, the onion route, really. Uh, Way to have anonymous websites and access the uh, the web uh, and the deep web uh, anonymously and with privacy uh, that you wouldn't be able to and also bypass a lot of censorship. Um, so yeah. that can be used, of course, for good or for evil. So same, same thing uh, with same with any ten, any technology. Same thing with you know I know you don't like transparent blockchains, but I I find a lot of work a lot of value in like the big blocker version of Bitcoin that is transparent, honest, and honesty machine because. Although I do see it as an, a mechanism that could be evil, like Craig Wright and Calvin Air wanted to impose with like stealing coins and all that bullshit. Thank God those guys are gone. You know, um, th that um, there is good there that could be used for good. Right. Like you said earlier. Right. You can keep people accountable. You know, you can keep governments accountable. Right. Because it's a transparent ledger. So it's, um, you know, it's a. Uh, we're navigating this, guys. We're navigating this alongside with you. Um, as you can tell, we are pioneering all this. And, and when we come together, is because we created a research group where we want you to come along with the ride with us. Because it's not what the it profits me nothing. And it does doesn't I don't I don't do anything by keeping all of this knowledge to myself. Mr. X also doesn't like. Mr. X, if you were the only person in the world that knew what you knew, like, would you have a network effect for what you know? Of course not. Uh, right? No, I mean, well, yeah, it was one of the reasons I wanted to help join Raphael with the crypto vigilante was because I, I know that most people have are completely unaware of how Bitcoin, other blockchains, and surveillance coins work. And um, uh, there's been a lot of people. There are a lot of people, and an increasingly larger number of people that are literally locked up um, because of blockchain surveillance. And they did something that they can no longer go back and undo on blockchain. And even if they weren't, I mean, even due to faulty blockchain analysis, there was recently a guy that was just uh, convicted um, that I wrote about in the newsletter recently, um, of allegedly running a Bitcoin mixer. Um, and he's now in prison. I think potentially uh, he, he was convicted and I think it could be decades in, in prison basically for supposed money laundering but um uh, yeah the, the fact that blockchain analytics uh, exists and is growing um most people are unaware of that fact is definitely a major risk i think for a lot of people in in crypto and i think uh yeah that was one of the reasons like i said why i wanted to help educate people about these issues and about sound money and sound cryptocurrency a fundamental perspective Right on, dude. Um, how are you doing with time? Can we still chat some more? Or do you think you got to get going soon? Yeah, we can chat a little bit more. Um, and actually, I did want to kind of go back. There were some other topics you were talking about, or we, we talked about earlier. Um, I don't know if you want to go back to any of those. You or... can Sure, bro. Of course, man. Yes, of course. What's up? So, yeah, you were talking about the, I guess, the outlook with privacy coins. I think, yeah, I think privacy coins definitely have massive upside Due to the fundamentals, um, people not understanding the issues of fungibility, sound money, um, and and also blockchain analytics. I think they're usually in, in past crypto market cycles, usually privacy tends to pump later in the cycle. So I would definitely not be surprised to see sequence pump as we move further into the bull market cycle, um, which is expected probably to uh, top out late 2025 assuming we 
follow past cycle patterns. So, okay. And okay. again, let me ask you a question. Mr. A, and Mr. W. Let me ask you yes. a quick question before I keep going. Okay. Out of all the privacy coins, Wow Nero, Darrow, Monero, and Pirate Chain, those are the ones we we are the top ones. Which one is the most secure? I'm not saying private. The question is secure. In what order would you would you oh, rank? What do you security? mean by secure? <laughs> um, hash <laughs> power, secure. hash power, and fifty one percent attack resistant. Well, I, um, so there's a lot of angles. Yeah, I don't know. It, it kind of depends which angle we're looking at. So Monero definitely has like the most. I would say the most users, the most um, peer reviewed code. So it's more secure from that perspective, and also the uh, random X. Too. Oh yeah, the I mean random X you have there's large amounts of computers all mining Monero and there is a tail mission which incentivizes those miners to continue mining. Um and that's obviously very important as well. And that's an issue that Bitcoin will run into years down the line. Um or BTC Bitcoin specifically. I mean, I honestly but, uh, think it could be next next uh in the next couple of weeks, but yeah, sure. Could but anyway, yeah, that's a whole yeah, another yeah. topic. But yeah. um but yeah, going back to privacy coins, yeah, Pirate Chain has its strength of the delayed proof of work, which um, basically you'd have to attack Litecoin's network, which has a lot of ASIC miners running the script uh, uh, algorithm. Mm -hmm. And and then you also have would have to attack Komodo as well, because the the blockchain is the transactions are notarized periodically on this uh, on there. So, um, and it uses the hash of those other networks too. Those notarizations. So, so point is that what in order to Wild reverse Nero? transactions, their... you have to attack all those chains. But Wild Nero chain... is pretty secure in the way that its uh, its pools, uh, its mining pools are like non-existent. Yeah, they did remove mining pools on Wild Nero as well. But Wild Nero is also a much smaller network as well. So it uses Random Wow, which is kind of a derivative of Random X, basically. And um, and yeah, that is. I mean, I mean, it's much smaller network, so it is would be easier to attack in that respect. But um. What I mean, about Darrow I, and Darrow security, 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 hash power. Yeah, or Darrow has a pretty fast block so, or block time of uh, eighteen seconds or so. Um, and and also another cool thing about Darrow is that the um, confirmations happen within that time, so it's pretty much almost instant confirmation. So Darrow is very fast you know, with the execution of smart contracts and the homomorphic encryption. So there's yeah, there, each one has their strengths for sure. Um, there's you know, different pros and cons for each each network. So I don't know. Okay, not so sure. right now, I'd say right Monero now. because of its strength is probably the most secure. Um, okay. or it's it's how large it is, how many people are using it as money and adopting. It. But then Firechain also with the delayed proof of work also has some unique capabilities because it's kind of piggybacking that's on very on unique. Point. Yeah, so, that's that's pretty powerful, so dude. Yeah. There's definitely security there. I right? definitely like okay. as well. So and we Firechain is is extremely cheap right now. By the way, it's so at the time we're recording this, it's only less than uh 20 cents or so okay so like fluffy pony talks about how cryptography privacy anonymity matters at the present moment like you can't talk about like oh well it would be in the future or or you can't rely in the future for what it is now like at the present moment right now or uh, give me your ranking of like the level of privacy of like the anonymity um the uh, an onset of each blockchain yeah, How there's you different in terms of privacy. Yeah, there's different. Yeah, there's different angles to look at it. I would say, um, if you look at the anonymity set number, um, Pirate Chain has a very high anonymity set um, since it has the basically um, mixing with all the other transactions that have ever occurred on, on Pirate Chain. Whereas Monero, I mean, it has a ring size of sixteen, but the, the recent potential flood attack that happened that. Uh, there was research that was a paper that was put out um, showing that the effective ring size was around five or six um, <laughs> decoys instead of six the full sixteen decoys because there was some, an apparent blood spam attack that may have happened last month. So that um, could have yeah, but, but, brought but, those um, numbers down. But, but also, has there's more a lot more signatures that has more um, is a bigger or higher ring size. Yeah, yeah. Wow, Nero does have a higher uh, ring size, but it also has a lot less users. So. A lot of those rings that it's mixing with could, would be would be from a much smaller a subset of, or, or um, user base. Basically, Monero has a much larger user base. So, so there's kind of different. If you knew the total amount of participants in the Monero network with which those other decoys were mixing, basically, 
um, or the, the ring size was mixing, then you would be able to calculate what the actual, I guess, anonymity set is. So there's like the anonymity set um, of Firechain, that is, Firechain does have less people using it than Monero. So, um, but now, of it, course, if Firechain grows, so definitely yeah, but if you're looking at just the technology, then yes, Firechain is the most. Chain is, is, is superior. Yes. Okay. So that's what I was saying. It kind of depends on how you, what angle you're looking at if you're factoring in the user base of each uh, cryptocurrency network and also versus just like the technology, assuming all participants in all the networks with the same size, then yes, Power so Chain now, would be the most secure, then it would be WoW Narrow, then Monero. This is just based on current rings. Well, 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 okay. And so Darrow, Darrow uses ring signatures as well, correct? Yeah, there are yeah decoys. However, it doesn't use key images, and that's another factor that oh, there have been arguments made about since Darrow does not use key images, they say some people in Darrow have said that it's more it's more private because of that. So there is definitely some disagreement. I think more research would be needed to be done to more objectively determine that. So right now the most private cryptocurrency in the world is Pirate Chain. From the technical perspective, as of right now, it does appear that way. And notice how everybody see, yeah, that's what I'm saying. People have to embrace the left side of the curve, like the stupid. You have to embrace your inner retard. If you want to make money in crypto, because look at how powerful Pirate Chain is and then compare it to um, Dog with Hat on Solana. You see what I mean? And all the attention is going to something that's transparent and is just fun. So, um, you know, I think I think Pirate Chain and, and all these privacy coins could gain a lot if they embrace their inner retard more and they put out more memes, more um, did stupid airdrops. I don't know, like. If they were just more well, creative I, I don't, as a community, yeah, they, I don't, they would I don't know if that's it. I think it. I think it actually might just be the market cycle because right now we have a cycle of meme coin where all the meme coins, if, if something's a meme coin, it's pumping. That's just a market cycle. So right now the market psychology is excited about meme coins. But of course, those these cycles tend to, I mean, the, the, yeah, they kind of, they, they go in phases, right? So you have, right now it's kind of the meme coin type cycle. So at some right. point though, a lot of these meme coins, they're, there's not going to be enough people to buy them and they're all going to start crashing. So then meme coins will start fading away and then we'll see, then the privacy coin cycle will come, but that's not right now, obviously right now. Privacy has been actually dumped. Privacy coins have been dumped pretty bad. So, it, but at some point they will, there'll be not enough bears selling them and uh, people are going to realize, oh, it really happens. It's happened multiple times in different cycles. People re remember or realize, oh, I need to, figure out or i have to pay taxes now or whatever how do i how do i hide these crypto gains okay we're going to start seeing more examples of people getting arrested for not paying their taxes on their crypto and and um maybe somebody in, the, in a meme coin maybe ends up getting arrested yeah but see that's that's the we'll thing is, is that like like you you, you, you go like there this. you go there to like the fundamental utility and worst case scenario which is real and i agree with you uh but i think that the way you know, th that there is, you have to also emphasize the wholesome aspect of all of this, right? The fact that, like, no one that, like, would want to store their wealth would ever want to welcome financial voyeurism from anyone. So, it, oh, yeah, it's, I it's mean, chain, when you're talking about memes, it's designed I mean, to have yeah. privacy. Yeah, yeah well, now, narrow itself is a meme coin. So, so exactly. it, and it has, it actually had, has pumped a bit recently. Yeah. The truth and, is that uh, anything can be a meme coin. Does that make sense? What I'm trying to tell you, like, anything well, even can... Bitcoin, Bitcoin grew through memes. That, I mean, I know you had the, the wizards, the Taproot Wizard logo, literally was a meme that uh, was posted on Reddit, and and that it, with the magic internet money, um, <laughs> that drawing of the wizard there, that right from, from well, years ago, that was is that, like, what helped to uh, um, Bitcoin, right? But other memes like that. Yeah, what I'm trying to say is, is that like we don't need to, um. Like a lot, a lot of what people do in in crypto, especially it, um, people that are OGs in crypto, that are not really aware of what's happening now. They're not aware because they don't understand that they don't understand Gen Z. So they're reactive. Like I said earlier, a lot of the privacy coin world is an example of this. They are reactive to the world of fiat, financial uh, slavery. They are reactive to the surveillance state. But you have to understand that there is a brand like there are generation Z right now is is crazy is going nuts because they go to college they get in debt and they and they get uh, a a boomer corporate job and they can't even pay rent with it like so a lot of people are 
they're they're drawn towards crypto now there's a whole new... we don't have sound money i mean our fiat is i agree bro i agree i agree i agree but, <laughs> and, but you have and to when people that, start like... researching i think the best thing for these young people to do is to start learning austrian economics and realize what sound money is and then that will yeah, eventually but, lead them to monero things like but, that. The, but the best way to teach them about austrian economics is through profit seeking via meme meme via well, but education. also and the, that, yeah, mimetic that, education, that, that mimetic happen, education, but also you can have people that buy the meme coin at the top and then it crashes for years after no, that. No, 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 no. I'm not saying buy the meme coin. Suicide or something. So I'm, I mean, no, I'm, no, not, no, I'm not, I'm not saying buy the meme coin. I'm bad. saying, I'm saying something like the Monero community could emphasize creating, embracing this mimetic warfare more. You understand what I mean? Like, like you, you don't have to. Oh, yeah, there, there are. You don't have to be, uh, have a reactive memes. stance to the market and say yeah. like, well, you know those those coins are just stupid. Those meme coins are dumb. Why? How dare you just even? They're just a waste of time. Like that's very reactive. Whereas if you embrace that vibe, you can you can bring those people to to understand these dynamics better. So what I'm trying to the message yeah, I'm I'm put out there for the privacy coin community in general is like you guys have the power in your hands to change culture because you guys have. Uh, assets that are very valuable and you're you're the all of the masses that are coming into crypto they're being psyop by the people that we've mentioned by the entities that we've mentioned they've been psyop and they're constantly being psyop this psyop doesn't stop so you guys have to be proactive and psyop back by creating memes by creating games by creating things that lead people to wholesome things wholesome things sound investing um, things that are um, fundamentally sound and not things that are just fluff and, and could like lead people to, to problems like you just well expressed, you know? So it's, um, I, I think, I think a lot, I mean, again, the, the, the chart of like the left side and uh, right side of the curve really applies here because a lot of people in privacy land are extreme right side of the curve. And by them not embracing the left side of the curb, they are becoming the the mid curb frustrated dude in the middle, because, you know, I, and and the thing is, Mister X, like I agree with you. Yes, it's a part of the cycle, and at the end is where all the money goes into 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 privacy coins at the end of the cycle. Sure, yes, but why does it have to be that way? Why can't there be a more proactive approach? And and why can't people just start creating memes and 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 you know having fun? And leading in teaching people about um this um which is arguably the most valuable sector within crypto does that make sense what i'm trying to tell you yeah I, well the thing is humans i mean they act a lot or people but they kind of act in cycles like this like so we see so even though it's kind of like psychological phenomena we have like the you know, large amounts of people sometimes do bad things at the same time or, or good things so i think Kind of the herd of the, the people is going to eventually will move into privacy but right now at, the, at this moment or at least the past year or two has been uh it has not been the case that they've been kind of the, you, you, um, you want to see you want to know my perspective of what this is every you just described perfectly is a shepherd moving the sheep moving the but, cattle well, those are the things. So, so you know why that is? You know we're why trying to is. educate people so they understand. No, no, I, I mean, agree yeah, with you, but you understand how, why, how these, where, these where these work and, and, and what is sound fundamentals, but then also understand the charts, which does reveal important information about what's happening in the market. Right, market but, but that human psychology is, is human psychology that comes from a, a, a human nature that has been conditioned and psyop by mm -hmm. the, the owners of these financial plantations. So these boom yeah, and And that's cycles, why we write... Yeah, the, the, the vigilantes what helps kind of unprogram you from that. It helps you understand. Yes, what, but the thing what is, is that, that, that the unprogramming happens not just by having crystallized intelligence, which is what we what we focus on is that. Oh, yeah, we, we focus on both. You you focus some having, on, on the fluid stuff with the with the on chain economies, which is happening in real time quickly. And that's what the vigilante insiders club is for and, and why you really need to be a member if you want to be able to participate in that fluid intelligence in real time and also access uh, our team in real time. so we yeah, actually have these we've had these debates for... yeah we've had right. these debates in the vic actually which is very interesting because a lot of our subscribers are excited to see us discussing these very issues in real time in the vic so in some ways this is kind of a little taste of what 
you might get in the big uh, sports debating you know, discussing these issues. And the reason I say this is because a lot of people in the privacy coin sector in in in, in very highly intelligent, you know, right side of the curve individuals, they focus very much on on the crystallized intelligence aspect of of all of this, which is like they 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 you know they're all about the peer review process, the false ethos, and then you have the more artistic world, which is, which comes from, um, you know, you see a lot of that like in a Solana Ethereum, and, and ordinals in the big block Bitcoin world. Marrying the two is very important, and it's almost like there's a a yin yang, a a Taoism that happens in crypto when you do that and you enter into a state of flow where you're embracing you're embracing the right side of the curve with the left side of the curve i really think that everybody um just for fun if you're into privacy coins i think you should become acquainted with with the culture in solana in ethereum in in btc ordinals just for fun i'm not even giving this as a financial advice i'm just like just for fun like go there and and like in solana just spend five bucks on pumped up fun you know just spend five dollars. Just you know, you, you're gonna lose that money. Like, who cares? But you got to play a little bit. You got to see the vibe. You got to feel the energy. You have to understand that that is really what's bringing people, especially the young people, into crypto, and so that you can then understand how embrace how to embrace your inner retard to be able to be able to speak to the retards that have been conditioned by by the state. And by Hollywood and by the media, you know, they. So you got to learn how to speak retard, so that you you can sigh up the retards back into a wholesome uh, understanding of things. So it's uh, it's um, you know, that's the, and and that's and that's where we're at. You know, that's where we're at. It's just I keep seeing Mr. X. You know, the reason why I bring this up is because, um, I, I've come to the realization that crystallized intelligence is not enough um if it was um then um if it was then i mean yeah it's enough everybody, it, it kind everybody of depends would, on your situation then, like for me it's then enough because i already have enough money top five like, i don't a cryptocurrency yeah. like well it, and that's the thing is, it's a cycle so monero had dropped yeah now it's in the 50s right now it used to be it was in the top five during uh, one of the last cycles but why it makes no sense but, why it would be you see what I'm saying? And the reason why it would why be in the top five or why it wouldn't be? Which... Why it wouldn't be? It makes no sense why it would it would be it's where it's at. It's because well, no, it, human it may, nature, I mean, human it makes nature sense is not, that is not are... rational, dude. That's what yeah, I'm trying to tell exactly. you. Yeah, right. it, yeah, you have people that rational. deep down they know that Monero is the most sound, but they're they they see that meme uh, meme coins are hot right now, so they sell their Monero and figure they can make more money on, on the meme coins. So and that's what's been happening recently. So um I don't think that's going to continue forever, though. At some point, this cycle will, um, I mean, the smart money will start going back towards Monero. So I think that's already started to happen and will happen more in the future. But right for now. people, it, it also really depends, like you're saying, like you can't have crystallized intelligence. I think it's good to have both. I agree. It is well, you it's have to optimal have both. to have both. You have to it's have both, yeah, it's yes. optimal to have both. But if you have, like for someone like me, like if I already made plenty of money, then I don't have to necessarily spend time on the, on the, fluid stuff as much I, I can afford to just relax in my crystallized intelligence but, but I, I mean i guess yeah I, I, i'm further crystallizing too though i mean i'm always I'm not saying I, I i don't have anything to learn i think it's important to uh to study all the perspectives and to um, like rafael said it is good to at least get some experience like i have like i said i have bought some dojos some some of those uh Basically, the ordinals of Doge. Yeah, so we'll see if that actually ends up getting some traction. But um, yeah, these are all important things. It's just kind of flexing muscles in different areas. So you want to flex your privacy muscles. You also want to flex your and exercise your um, on chain muscles. So those are all things that, that because of our diverse team at the Crypto Vigilante, which has experience in all these different areas, I think that's um, and the big, I think this is something that, that um, people should consider. Um, making that investment too. And, and, and you got to understand the the the, the crypto also you have to understand the the psyop world of crypto which dominates the narrative you know the blackrock you know vc funded world of crypto which is something that i, I really enjoy mr a and w because they really give us a stoic perspective on that 
aspect of crypto. I learn a lot from them because it's an, an, an aspect of crypto that I don't like. I don't want to be part of, but it is something that I love how they present it. It's very stoic and it's just the way it is, you know, like, like it is the way it is. I mean, the, the way it is, is that you have Bitcoin um, setting the trends. You have Bitcoin, you have the, the Bitcoin dominance um, over altcoins. You have a, you know, you, you have a BlackRock entity and now more BlackRock like entities. Well, yeah, there's your Fidelity, you know, other large shots. entities. And, and you have to accept that and you have to, you know, acquiesce your mind to that reality to know how to handle everything around you better. Um, and, to you know, be uh, so it's cool. It's just really cool to, to see how all of our perspectives come together. Um, I learn a lot from A&W, dude. I really do, man. And, and I told something to subscribers today. I'm like, look, man, whenever you see us as analysts going back and forth and arguing, the moment you you see that, yes, yeah, step back, listen to Jeff and Ed because they come with all this amazing experience. Listen to what they have to say and then take a step back and realize that you cannot allow anyone, not any one of us analysts to do the thinking for you. Like you have to think for yourself and then you have to personalize your crypto experience and I think a psychological signal for, for, for anyone, especially I say for me and for everyone, any perspective that comes from any, you know, worthy analyst, you know, like dudes that we, we have in the crypto vigilante, if it bothers you for some reason, if it, if it bothers you, that perspective, if it bothers you because it doesn't align with your worldview, with your perspective, with your outlook, that means that that's the perspective that you should stop and research and understand as best as possible because if you are just seeking comfort and and like confirmation bias like i don't want you here bro because like um that's the, the truth and the beauty of, of of our vibe is is that we don't we don't agree with each other like look look at me bro like i get a lot of shit and i don't give a fuck because i'm a big blocker i i'm on that side of the bitcoin civil war most of you guys if not all of you are like okay with btc and what btc developed into I'm not. I think it's a fucking abomination, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, of Bitcoin, you know, it's to me, it's like a Frankenstein monster, you know, poor, addicted to the crack and meth of fiat, you know. To, that's what I see BTC as, right? And But yet I'm stoic about it. And I'm like, it's the reality I have to deal with right now. And it's, uh, and it's, the, it's, 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 I need an environment where, where I have people that challenge me on my worldview. You know, and, and I'm everybody knows me as like, oh, here goes Raph. He's going to talk about BSV again, blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry. I can't be, help myself but to be honest. But it's like, but the cool thing is that I get to do that because I got you guys. You guys are covering all aspects of Bitcoin, all aspects of, of crypto. And you guys disagree with me on, on that. And so it's like, it's like, um, and the cool thing, man, I got to reiterate this again, Mr. X. You can't find this shit anywhere else in crypto. You cannot find this shit anywhere else in crypto. You actually, you won't. You won't find OGs coming together from different perspectives, duking it out and teaching you at the same time. You just won't. It's not going to happen. So that's why, man, I, 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 I think that, you know, we got to keep doing what we're doing. Because I really want the future to be dominated by a bunch of Roger Vares. You know, I really do, man. I think Roger Ver, um, I dedicate this interview to, to Roger Ver, by the way, um, because I, I'm very grateful to him, even though I disagree with him um, on the big block Bitcoin stuff. Like him and I were on opposite camps during the, the big blocker hash war that we had between BSV and, and, B, and, B, and BSV and Bitcoin Cash. But I, I admire him a lot. And I think that crypto and Bitcoin wouldn't be what it is if it wasn't for him. Like, I think Bitcoin and crypto would have been psyop a lot more, a lot faster by the Black Rocks of this world. And it was someone, it took someone like like um, Roger Vera to really come in and and give that libertarian free market um, agorist oriented investment into crypto that that gave us a, a a a path forward towards freedom um and so yeah dude i i um and, and even someone like roger dude he he he's not he's not surrounded by people like us 
or maybe he's a subscriber and I wouldn't know. But even him, anybody else in crypto is surrounded by their own echo chambers. You do realize that, X, right? Like everyone else, everyone in crypto, oh, yeah. <laughs> everyone in crypto is surrounded by their own echo chambers. Like we well, are the only yeah, ones. there are a lot of different tribes. I mean, but the thing is, the yeah. TCB has people from all the tribes. We're not just from a bunch all of the BTC tribes, maxis. Dude. We're not just a bunch of privacy maxis. We're not just a bunch of or BSV maxis or or BTC maxis or BCH maxis um, and, or other and, and maxis. And that's what I'm gonna do, bro. Because like I'm gonna keep having you and and all the other dudes uh on the team on the show often, like often, dude. I'm gonna I'm gonna go through you guys. Why? Because I don't want my perspective to be the only perspective getting out. If anything, it's it's been um it's been bad for our brand to have just my perspective out. Because to be honest, fuck my perspective. I'm just one man. The crypto vigilante is not just Raphael. I'm a fallible human being. I can make mistakes. I can fuck up. You know, have I fucked up? I don't think so. But um, but but am I better off with you guys as my brothers along the in the journey, watching my back and I'm watching your back and and we're all like looking at each other's blind spots? Fuck yeah, dude. You know what I mean? Um, and so it's um, no, I'm gonna keep having you guys on even more, bro. Um, I know you probably have to leave soon, but uh, do is there anything else you want to talk about? Well, I, I wanted to say, uh, echo kind of what you said about Roger Beer. I mean, he's, I mean, even though I disagree with him about the, some of the, um, the block size issues and privacy, maybe privacy issues. Actually, I did hear he, he recently is, has been supportive of Monero, which is encouraging to hear, but no, he's, um, he's a big Monero buff. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, said, so. he said, he said, if, if Monero would have been around before Bitcoin, I would have, I would have been a Monero max extremist. Um, oh, well, there, oh. So yeah, I don't. It's, yeah. it's obvious, you know. It's it's yeah. obvious, dude. It's it's like, um, Roger <laughs> Ver is the Monero guy that stuck or that tried to make it. Yeah, stuck around in Bitcoin, Bitcoin and tried to try to, to save, save Bitcoin it. with it. He yeah, tried to, to save Bitcoin, Bitcoin into it. And and for that, thank you, Roger. You know, because Bitcoin is very valuable. Like I know Mr. X disagrees on this, but but we need money that is inclusive of everyone. And unfortunately, we live in a world with a lot of idiots, and a lot of these idiots will censor a beautiful a blockchain like Monero because it's just too much, too much privacy for them, like you saw with Binance. So, um, having pseudo anonymity like Satoshi gave us in Bitcoin's original design, I think is 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 something that uh, that is extremely valuable, man. I really think so. Um, what was it? Oh, an, another guy I wanted to, to mention that I have a lot of respect for is Eric Voorhees. Um, he was another guy I, I had in early in my Bitcoin journey. He was somebody that I, I did look up to in, in some of various areas. So um, for him and, and Roger Vera. Yeah. And even even Eric Voorhees, dude, and, and, and Roger, he himself, you can tell he's within an echo chamber. And actually, Eric Voorhees, like what I see about him is, is that he focus his mind is so like grounded on on like he's his his uh he's so grounded on libertarianism and austrian economics that he can be, be in the environments that he is because you notice that he's surrounded by vc by the vc crowd right like he's very much surrounded by them and so and that's why he was like promoting vc oriented things like file coins zcash Things that well, I'm, I'm talking about, shit. yeah, I, I'm, I'm talking about in the early days. So in 2012, he wrote an article called Bitcoin, the Libertarian Introduction. Uh, you Google or, or look that up on internet search. Engine. You know, it's, it's easy um, for a guy like me. It's a pretty good article, it's, actually. But well, see, that, this claim really is it's, it's easy for a guy like me that that uh, was not at the forefront in the early days, like 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 uh, Eric Voorhees and, and, and make comments like the one I just did. The truth is, is that uh, he's a dude that paved the way for all of us, right? And I'm a dude that is paving the way for a lot of people that are coming behind me. So well, and another right thing here. too. So it's like yeah, Eric um, Voorhees. Oh, oh yes, yeah, I just want to mention Eric Voorhees. He was on a, a discussion with Sam Bankman Fried, I think it was, or, or oh, and also that, remember that remember that speech he gave star, at the, uh, the yeah that one he just totally owned Sam Bankman Fried, oh, like destroyed him because so oh, so he still does have some of the good roots. Oh no, he, the, he's no, he's he's badass. Yeah, he, he, I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm just yeah. saying. It's like okay. It sounded like earlier you were no, saying he kind of like caved no, no, and went no. VC or something. <laughs> what I'm saying is that him and Roger had to make that connection between the boomer corporate world, the VC world, and crypto. 
because they were oh, the yeah. poster boys at the beginning. Does that make well, that's sense? True, yeah, Roger Ver being some of the earlier seed investors and, and yeah, so they had to other... make that bridge. I, I yeah. you know, and by making that bridge, well, obviously where your attention goes, your energy flows, right? So you're in that environment of making that bridge, you you have a choice. You have a choice to either continue making those bridges like they have been, or you are in a Taki and says, fuck that bullshit. I'm not going to be the front man for Ethereum. Like I was. Oh, yeah. There's to. another guy I respect I'm too. Amir Taki's awesome. I'm going, to, I'm, going awesome. To, I'm going to fight for freedom and, and focus on privacy, right? So, like, you know, everybody. Yeah, these has are the to make OG cypherpunks right here. <laughs> OG cypherpunks. Yeah. Every, everybody has to make choices, dude. So, no, dude. And, and you know, dude, it's, 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 um, there is, like, when you're in a new territory, there is no wrong path to take. Because it's it's all we're all pioneers and we're all just going. And and the interesting thing about this conversation itself is is that a lot of people will think that, oh, you're late to crypto, that this was something that happened 15 years ago. No, bro, you're actually very early. Like we're still in the early days. And we're very much in the early days. We're still at the ground floor. Um, what you've seen is crypto, Bitcoin coming up, and then all of Wall Street, big tech, and Silicon Valley coming in and psyoping the world of crypto from within. And that's why we had civil wars. That's why we had all this bullshit. That's why something like Monero is being kept down. We have a lot of psyops. And what, I, what I'm focusing on is to teach you guys how to understand what these psyops are and how to become, um, you know, emissary, you know, ambassadors of freedom on the internet and help us psyop the masses back to freedom. Freedom go up. Because well, freedom go so, up technology is the reason why Bitcoin uh, blasted to begin with. Before oh, the yeah, fork in yeah. 2017, this uh, Bitcoin was capable of sustaining, you know, um, Bitcoin was capable of sustaining a big block version of Bitcoin for that time. The fork happened and the and, and, and the block size war happened because we were hitting the limit of scaling. But that doesn't mean that BTC, at the, even at this moment, can't scale on chain. Actually, that's the smartest thing for people to do in BTC is to let Bitcoin is to scale BTC, the on-chain economy of BTC, even if it's just gradual. Like just raise it up to 8 megabytes. Raise it up to 12 to 20. It's something we can contain. Like a freaking floppy disk of that, that's like terabytes. Hundreds of terabytes is, it will cost you a couple hundred bucks. I mean, you can sustain that as a mining operation. It's not fucking rocket science. And But the thing is, is that the, the space has been captured, that these VCs are here trying to be the middleman between um, the on-chain capabilities of Bitcoin and of crypto and the end user. So that's why they're always promoting layer twos, layer twos, right? So they always want to be the middleman between... Um, they want to be the e the eve to between um a and b right alice and bob so you know just you, you have to be aware of that and you have to be aware that we you as a viewer you have more power than you realize and that's why you have to go into things that are like very grassroots like if like ordinals doginals or like pumped up fun on, on on solana so that you yourself get to experience the power that you have as an individual in the on-chain economy where these digital assets when they're completely free allow you to to be a player man so you're not just a passive investor you're a player you right now could create some stupid funny meme coin on solana that could be worth billions of dollars later on this afternoon like I, i'm serious if you come up with something that is really cool the world will fucking go into it and it only takes like a dollar or less to emit on Solana and the world is there for you. Do you understand like where you're at? Like where we're at here? We're at the point where the power is in your hands, dude. And all the roads big lead back to profit seeking and a coming together in align incentives because civilization is nothing more than the realization that we yield more working together than working independently by ourselves. And what these network effects create is, is that the blockchain architecture is the network effect that is most interconnected, that brings us closer together to one another. 
And so when we when we operate within these networks and we create things on chain, we're operating within a system that is the most profitable and efficient system known to mankind for us to be able to um, exchange value with each other. So I think everybody watching this, especially if you're a, a, a privacy buff, you should go to uh, pump that fun and just play with a couple dollars just to play with it, man. Because like you will realize what th that is the future. There is no going back guys. Like social media will not go back beyond be uh, before a time. TikTok. So the dopamine overload of TikTok is the standard. And from there we're going even more crazy. Okay. There is no going back. Like you have to understand that there is no MySpace. So if you think we're going to go back in time and technology, that's not how it works, man. You have to acquiesce your mind to change the mental models of your mind and, and realize that we are all converging towards more, more freedom together. All of crypto is coming together. And, and you have to be at the forefront of this or you're going to miss out. You're going to miss out if you find yourself in echo chambers. I, I If I wasn't for the crypto vigilante guys... I would be in a fucking echo chamber and honestly, I would be lost right now. I would probably be between like, you know, just if it wasn't for the crypto vigilante, I would be in echo chambers. I straight up would be in echo chambers um, by default because that's the way the internet is designed, is designed to keep you in bubbles so that they can manipulate your perception better. It's 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 designed to uh, isolate you, it's designed to um, psyop you at all times and it's designed to uh, keep you apart, divergent, keep people apart from each other, divide and conquer. That's what the internet has been designed as. So you have to realize that. And you have to realize that the way Satoshi designed Bitcoin, the blockchain design, that mathematical graph of the small world network is one where it brings us together, together. And that's why this whole thing against Bitcoin and crypto has been one to separate us, divide and conquer, an altcoin for this, an altcoin for that. But you'll realize that everyone is there's a, there is a gravity that pulls us together, that pulls us together to the best of networks. If you want privacy, you're going to seek a Monero. You're going to seek a pirate chain. If you want to be active as an entrepreneur on the internet, you're not going to go to Filecoin. Who the fuck uses Filecoin? No, you're going to be using, you're going to go where all the entrepreneurship is. Where is the entrepreneurship right now? You're going to go to Solana. Oh, oh, okay. Well, if you want a lot of uh, access to a lot of capital and create something that is boutique and cool and, and the biggest network, market cap wise, we're going to go to Bitcoin ordinals and you're going to deploy there. So you have to realize that we're all coming together. We're all coming together, guys. And you have to be well-rounded to understand that all of us are going to converge to the best of networks. Okay. So pump.fun is nothing more than participating within the Solana ecosystem. You, you do realize that you're not leaving Solana. You're in Solana, right? So what's the final exponent of pump.fun? It's Solana itself. When you do BTC ordinals and you play with a bitmap and you cool, do cool things with bitmap games and, and you know whatever, you are within BTC. You know that, right? And your transactions are feeding BTC miners. You're feeding the BTC miners. You're growing the BTC network from within. You're making it stronger from within. You're not leaving BTC. And what's the final exponent within BTC? Well, arguably it's BTC. Right? It could be something else that come that emerges from within BTC, like an Ordi, but that's up for discussion. That's an argument. That's whatever. But overall, you're 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 within this ecosystem. We're all coming together, right? Everyone's coming together. So there's this constant theme that you guys have to realize and become hip to that we're coming together. And and I think it's um it's important to avoid echo chambers at this point. And and um yeah, dude. Um I'm just really happy that we do what we do, Mr. X. I really am, dude. I'm really happy that we, we created the atmosphere that we did at the Crypto Vigilante, at the Vic as well. Um, I'm about to launch this book next week. Let's go get everybody preparing for the halving. And what I consider is going to be the rock star protocol of the year, the runes protocol on BTC, which is going to be the ordinals of 2024, baby. Let's go. Let's go. So yeah, so I, I wanted to mention this earlier because you're asking if I had any last uh, any last things to say before we sign off. But I did want to mention that. Um, so another thing about the crypto vigilante that no other service 
costs like ours would uh, provide is the important, very important foundational uh, aspect of operational security, which um, if, if you don't know how to secure your crypto uh, or store it, you're, you're going to lose it. You could easily get hacked. You could easily um, or, or just you know, not understand how to set up wallets and things like that. So um, securing your private keys and just having proper operational security is uh, extremely important in the area of crypto. And, and um, but we have an operational security expert or multiple experts, but um, one who specifically focuses on simply uh, just just that, uh, that topic. So um, in the Vigilante Insiders Club, Vic, and also in the Crypto Vigilante, that's something unique that you won't get anywhere else. Yeah, dude. Um, I love our team, bro. I really do. Um, yeah, thank you for 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 going on this uh, adventure with me, Mister X. It's been it's been it's been beautiful, dude. It has been amazing. Um, I really want to thank you for that, and thank me, uh, thank Ed Bugos and Jeff Burke as well, dude. It's it's it, uh, I I love what we've created, man. It really is um, the center of all networks, and and we got to keep it that way. Um, just the vibes are so high, bro. Uh, you know, like, um, yeah, dude, like, like, um, I'm speechless. I'm speechless at the at the amount of like brain power that's at, that that we have with us. Well, yeah, another thing too with, with so with crypto, the crypto vigilante, if um, you subscribe to our newsletter, you'll also get the um, dollar vigilante included um, premium, the premium version of the dollar vigilante included as well. And right now uh, we have silver and gold are making, uh, are pumping, gold is making new all-time highs. Silver is pumping to new highs that have not been seen for quite a long time as well. Okay. So <laughs> silver Thank and gold, they're, that, they're very undervalued. And it's important because once you, if you make, let's say you make millions of dollars in cryptocurrency, um, but then what do you do with it, right? You need to know how, how do you manage these gains and grow them even more, which would be, and also basically outcompete the, the dirty fiat dollar, which is collapsing. So learning how to properly survive and profit during the dollar collapse, that's literally what we do when we've been doing that for over a decade. So um, and our team has... <laughs> No, other, no one else in the world has the experience of our team. So, so, um, so I highly recommend um, taking a look at, at subscribing, or don't subscribe. That's cool too with me. Yeah, or or just keep watching our videos. That's fine. Don't, don't subscribe. But, <laughs> but uh, just, I think you'll, you'll yeah. just give me more an opportunity to get in uh, cheaper at things and <laughs> less <laughs> less uh, less necess less less sharing of differential knowledge out in the open with other people. Which is cool too. Either way, we win, um, dude. I, I I sleep, eat, and 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 like fuck. I do everything with crypto, bro. Like, dude, it's 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 incredible, dude. I can't believe we're we're in here talking about this. Um, like, I still can't believe we work with Jeff and Ed. Like, I dude, sometimes I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, it's this is like it's wild to me. Um. Yeah, dude, it's a it's a blessing. I'm happy you brought up uh, Dollar Vigilante because you know it's uh, it, it allows me to really get a whole world view on investing from from an Austrian economics perspective. So the fact that we have that as a foundation is is like. Dude, it's like so cool, bro. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm geeking yeah, out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a necessary, it's a necessary foundation though, too. I mean, yeah, understanding like Ed digging into the money supply because no other oh, analyst bro. actually analyzes the money supply properly from an Austrian economics perspective. So, and Ed provides these these. Bro, we, we need to create a proprietary an charts that. Yeah, well, yeah, Ed, Ed literally has his own proprietary charts for this. Stuff. Bro, the, the, the world is going to need, you know, 100 years from now, the world's still going to need Ed Bugos. So we're going to need an Ed GPT, bro. Wouldn't that be cool? Ed GPT. Anyways, bro, hey, we're just rambling now, bro. I'm done, man. I'm tired. Let's go. Oh, yeah, it's, it's been fun. So uh, it's been great for... talking to you. But I really want to have more of the team uh, here more often uh, because 
it, I, I, you know, I, yeah, we could do a panel. Everyone, everyone the... that I talk to, everyone that I talk to in crypto is like, they're very subject matter experts in their as in their aspect of crypto. But like the dudes that I, to be honest, respect me, like I can have a dude from like this blockchain that does this project that has this outlook. That dude is like a expert in that thing. You know what I mean? But like our analyst, um, when I talk to you guys, you guys are like experts in your own thing, but you guys also jive with all the other expertise of all the other analysts. And it's almost like I get a dude that is way, way more um, holistic and way more um, uh, yeah, has a whole more well-rounded worldview in general. Even though they may have their biases, their their own like outlook, it's really yeah. To me, it's 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 incredible, dude. Like, um, I honestly think that the smartest people in crypto are 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 um, TCV subscribers now. Like hands down, hands down, hands down, hands down. The smartest people in crypto are TCV subscribers, hands down. And by smartest, I mean most well-rounded. Uh, like crypto investors. I mean, um, yeah, we also have people going out and creating their own projects, building things, um, making yeah. profits in these markets. Yeah, cool stuff, bro. Hey, I'm gonna let you go. X, it's been an honor. I'm tired. I'm gonna go, um, probably gonna go take a nap and go work out and then finish that book up. So God bless you, man. Uh, keep the good vibes. Uh, and keep praying for us, guys, because what we're doing is is uh requires a lot of good energy what we do requires a lot of prayer because we are up against a lot of evil shit, a lot of evil people that don't want humanity to be financially free so thank you for your time thank you for tuning in peace love and now we are dealing with a possible world war. Some will say we are already in a world war. My condolences and prayers go out to everyone suffering under tyranny. It really sucks. I'm really sorry. But it seems as if people are starting to wake up regarding crypto more and more each day. And so it's in the description right here to read where we give our secret sauce and what we teach our subscribers because things are just that bad. You know, everyone needs this information. People need to know about sound cryptocurrencies that are actually private by default and to know how to properly use crypto.